right, just to carry on and drive home the point that the Ebola virus is airborne, okay, despite what it says in the media and despite what the, I believe, in this particular case, the sorely misguided alternative media believes. Um, once again, I'm, I'm looking in my microbiology book, okay? And Ebola virus is from, it's named after a river, but the best host reservoir is probably a fruit bat, okay? Which they use as food, but it's not acutely affected by the virus, okay? And once a human is infected, this is from my book, and then I'm going to go ahead and tell you what who says. And shedding blood, the infection is spread by contact with blood and bodily fluids. So remember what I said, the definition of airborne is if it can go, a droplet transmission can go farther than one meter. Bodily fluid would be considered something coming out of your nose. Okay, that can go more than one meter. And in many cases, by the reuse of needles used on patients, the local custom of washing the body before burial, burial often triggers new infections. Touching something dead. You know, the Jewish custom of burying someone within three days. Anyway, uh, stuff, and then it goes on. There are several hemorrhagic fevers, but you hemorrhage, okay? You're hemorrhaging. It disrupts the clotting process, okay? Now, on the next page, there's a chart, viral hemorrhagic fevers. And here we go under emerging vital hemorrhagic fevers. Uh, it does list... Ebola, and the portal of entry is your mucous membranes. So getting a mask may not be the worst idea, okay? Covering your eyes, your nose, and your mouth. If you're in an area where Ebola exists, okay? It causes profuse bleeding. Its reservoir is these fruit bats that people are eating. These bats are not kosher. And it says method of transmission through blood on this chart. But in actuality, it can be transmitted through saliva. I want to point you now to the World Health Organization, okay? How do people become infected with the virus? Okay. Uh, it's introduced into the human population through close contact with blood, secretions, organs of other bodily fluids of infected animals. In Africa, infection has occurred through handling of infected chimps, gorillas, fruit bats, monkeys, forest antelope, and porcupines found ill or dead in the rainforest. These people are starving, and I feel bad for them. But if they were eating according to Torah, this wouldn't be happening because all of those animals, every single one of those animals, are not kosher. Okay, and I'm going to go over in the next video, there's different levels of unclean. There are the things you can't eat. There are the things you can't touch when they're dead. And then there are the things that are an abomination, meaning stay away. Or handling their raw meat. You see that? And then here, just drilling it home. Okay, airborne. Once a person comes into contact with an animal that has Ebola, it can spread person to person through direct contact through broken skin or mucous membranes. Okay. But it does say with blood, direct contact with blood, blood to mucous membrane. Okay. But it says here, or other bodily fluids or secretions, stool, urine, saliva, semen. Imagine living in a place where there is no, uh, sewage system where you're drinking infected water. It's gonna spread worse in those places, for sure, okay? When you're not wearing a mask, it's gonna spread worse, for sure. Okay, when you're touching dead animals, it's gonna spread worse. But saliva, this is snot. Pretty sure they just forgot to mention snot. It's not basically saliva coming out of your nose. It's not, but, okay, so just getting it in there for you guys. Um, wanted you to really understand that.